Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It's time for Tarascopes again. We're going to be doing the Tarascopes for the sign of Libra. Uh, that's Libra Sun, Libra Moon, Libra Rising for October 2024, your month, Libra, or one of your months anyway. Um, before we get to the tarot, we're going to be doing some astrology. Now, at the beginning of the year, I did these uh, um, these with charts for astrology, but it became too cumbersome, and I got a little bit too busy, which I was very grateful that I was busy. <laughs> I love seeing clients, so that's not an issue. Uh, but it did take away from how much time I could put in the telescopes. And so I stopped doing the charts, but I feel we're at a place in our evolution. We're at a place uh, in the year with eclipses and the and the um, um, American, I was going to say American revolution, uh, the American uh, election uh, happening that this would be a good time to pull the charts out again. So for those of you who are not all that interested in astrology, these are timestamps. You can jump right to the tower reading, which will be right after this. So uh, you don't have to worry if this is, uh, if this confuses you. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get started here. Okay. Goody, goody. All right, Libra. Well, it's your month. And uh, of course, the moon, uh, the moon, the sun moved into Libra back uh, in September, September 22nd, I believe it was. That was the uh, fall equinox here in the northern hemisphere and the spring equinox in the southern hemisphere. I know the people in the southern hemisphere are happy to see spring because, as I understand it, you had a pretty intensely cold winter. Um, we start with an eclipse of the sun. Now, the sun in Libra, as you may know, being a Libra or having Libra energy is not the most powerful position for the sun. I believe it's considered in its fall um, in Libra. It's in its uh, exaltation in Aries, and whatever sign is opposite the exaltation is considered the fall. The reason that the sun is considered in its fall First of all, because it's falling beneath the uh, uh, the horizon, right? Libra is sunset. But Libra is also an energy of understanding the other. And so there's a lot of focus on outside of self or the other person in your life. And the sun likes it to be all about them. <laughs> um and it's a balance between being about you and being in about others. And of course, other people really reflect parts of yourself, right? So, so it's all really up to us on a certain level. Um, but of course, the sun not particularly powerful in Libra in the way that the sun likes to be single pointed, it's about me kind of energy. And then it gets eclipsed because the solar eclipse is the, the moon eclipsing the sun. Now, it is only partial, uh, but it feels like there's even less of this sense of um, it's all for me and more of a sense of, of community, right? And so this actually might end up being a, a, um, a more positive spin of, of the energy where we start to realize that together, uh, we can uh, we can accomplish things that as a single person we cannot. So it is about cooperation, and this uh, this new moon is is a new moon, but it is on the south node. So perhaps we need to make new relationships with old friends, or perhaps we need to let go of some things before we can start new relationships. So that's a consideration. This is all happening in your first house, so a lot of it has to do with your perspective on yourself, Libra. How do you see yourself? What, where do you see your your place in this great in the great scheme? Now, of course, Kamala Harris is a Libra, so this is going to be uh, affecting her chart. Um, and Donald Trump, for ill, good or ill, he also uh, has quite a bit of a Libra in his chart. So both candidates are getting affected by this eclipse. Uh, more so, I would say Donald Trump than than um, 
than Kamala, but this is not about politics. I just thought I'd mention that because she is a Libra. Um, I don't want this to be about politics, but if it comes up, I'll, I'll mention it. Um, so that's how we start the month with an eclipse. We do have two um, uh, planetary um, stations. We have Jupiter stationing on the ninth and moving retrograde. That's at 22 degrees of Gemini. And now I promised this wasn't going to be about politics, but that actually sits uh, close to within two degrees of Kamala Harris's North Node and uh, sits on Donald Trump's North Node, Sun, and Uranus. So again, this Jupiter station is going to be important for both candidates. Now, Jupiter going retrograde for you, Libra, is happening in your ninth house, the house of justice the house of truth. Does it mean as it goes retrograde that that truth is, there's going to be less truth? Not necessarily. There's going to be a review of the information that's come out. So we'll actually probably get more truth this month and then in the preceding months uh, as, as uh, Jupiter retrogrades through, um, through Gemini. Um, <clears throat> We also have Pluto stationing, Pluto stationing uh, direct uh, on the 11th it, in, at 30 degrees of Capricorn. We know Pluto moved back into Capricorn at the beginning of September. And, uh, and we were like, ah, and it's been there and it's been moving slowly backwards, slowly backing into Capricorn. Now it, now it turns, it's, it changes direction moving forward, whenever Pluto moves forward or back or just changes direction, it builds up a lot of energy. So there's a lot of energy and a lot of power of transformation as Pluto stations. And at the beginning of next month, it is going to be making an opposition to Mars, uh, which will be at the, at the last degree of Cancer. That is the same degrees of the um, full moon that we had in July when um, Joe Biden um, step down from the nomination and, and back to Kamala. So that, that energy, those, those two degrees, the last degree of cancer, the last degree of Capricorn, there's actually been a number of things happening at those degrees, but this Pluto, uh, in November is going to be big for that. Well, we'll see it. And it's right before, is it right? I think it's right after the election. Actually, I think it's on the fourth and the election is on the third, but it's it's in it's it's in power at that time. All right, uh, the sun uh, after it uh, moves through your first house, uh, you know, lighting lighting you up really, lighting up your persona. It moves into the second house when the sun moves into into Scorpio, um, and then you start to think about your resources. You start to think about. Uh, the resources. Now, the, the second house is generally resources that are yours, but because it's Scorpio and Scorpio is a relational energy, uh, there is a sense in, with the Libra rising that what's mine is yours and what yours is mine. There's that that energy of community. Generally, we see that in the in the eighth house, but we're, we can see that in, in this house when we're looking at a, a chart with Libra. We also have Mercury, Mercury uh, in Libra starting the month and then moving into Scorpio, moves into Scorpio on the 13th um, and then October 13th. And we start um, really thinking about uh, our resources, our resourcefulness, and also uh, the resources that we have through our relationships with other people. Um Let's see, what else, what else, what else? Venus, oh goodness gracious, Venus, your ruling planet, starts the month in Scorpio and moves into Sag on the 17th. The 17th is the same day as the full moon that we have this month. The full moon is not an eclipse. It is too far away from the nodal axis to be considered an eclipse, but it's still happening in the uh, in the uh, energy of the nodes because the north node is in is in Aries and this is an Aries full moon. It is in your house of partnership and open enemies. Now this full moon happens to be conjunct Eris, the goddess of discord. And so uh, there could be discord among friends, but there's definitely gonna be discord among enemies. 
So this is going to be a battle royale, I think, um, this month, just in general, of course, and then for Libra especially. Okay. Uh, Saturn and Neptune still in your sixth house. Be careful uh, when, uh, well, of course, Neptune's been there for, what, 13 years now. So, uh, but with Saturn there, um, there are limitations. So you have to uh, make sure you're taking care of your, uh, not just your physical health, but your emotional health as well. Uh, Mars, the planet of action, is in Cancer up in that 10th house. Should be very busy. A lot of energy around your public persona. Um, the energy of Mars in Cancer is one of uh, sort of force to take care of the family, force for security, force for can be compassion if we allow it. All right. Um, and um, I also, uh, I didn't, did I say, yeah, Venus and Sag, I didn't actually say what that was, though. Venus moving into your third house of the mind, Sag is the, is the uh, planet, as the sign of freedom. We're going to start to be thinking uh, about issues of freedom and perhaps talking more about freedom. All right, so that's what I see, Libra. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I will see you again next month for uh, for the Tarascopes. Until then, and next up is your Tarascope. So uh, enjoy that, and I'll see you again soon. Namaste. Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation. It's uh, time to do the, um, the tarot part of the Tarascope. So we're going to be doing the Tarascopes, uh, the tarot <laughs> for uh, the sign of um, Libra. Libra. We're on Libra right now. Okay. So I'm going to be using the Crow deck, one of my uh, old-time favorites. Um, I purchased this deck when I was visiting Washington State. Uh, the artist or the woman who did the deck, I believe she did the art for it as well, uh, is actually from that area. Originally, though, from Massachusetts, so I feel connected in that way. I actually, um, I went to Soul Food Books in Redmond, Washington. I felt like I was going to Mecca because I used to watch Rick Levine and uh, Jeff Jower all the time. And now only, of course, Jeff passed away. And uh, now it's just Rick that goes there. But every month I watch it. It's fantastic. He's fantastic. But it was really cool to be there, to be in that space. And it's a really cool. Um, I don't even, I think I got some sort of like special local brew of some sort. My girlfriend who lives in Washington said, oh, you should have that. That's really good. So I did. But I just was in my glory. I don't have to tell you. All right. That's a story you didn't really hear, but that's the story. All right. Let's see what the cards say. We start with the Four of Wands. This is a victory. This is uh, a happiness, uh, getting together with people, celebration. It's a lovely, lovely card. So you're, in, you're starting the month off in good stead. All right, let's see what what uh, what's crossing that justice, justice, justice is balance. It's crossing that. Okay, let's continue. What's in what's underneath it? All the seven of cups. This is about choices. Uh, this can also be illusion, delusion, uh, energy. It can be wrong choices. It be it can be choosing um, your lower nature over your higher nature. All right, let's see what's in in the past. The four of pentacles in the past. This is holding on to what you have. Uh, <clears throat> this is financial security, security and stability in the past. In the sky. The Seven of Swords, somebody is uh, not on the up and up. There's shenanigans going on. Now, the Sky card 
isn't always directly concerning you as much as it is the energy in the general vicinity in the Zile guys. That's kind of how I read this card. Um, and so there's shenanigans going on. Honestly, you know what these cards look like at this point. And I don't like to bring politics into this, but I'll tell you, um, you you would like things to be fair and just, and you're a little concerned that people are going to drink the Kool-Aid, I think. The eight of pentacles in the immediate um, future. So do the work, do the work. If this is some, if you're concerned about the political situation that we find ourselves in, um, you need to just, just apply yourself, you know, phone banks, whatever, um, talking to people, making people aware, just doing the work. That's going to be, I think, going to be, going to be very helpful for you um, because you really feel like you need to do something to contribute. That's what this looks like. All right, let's continue how it's seen from the outside. Uh, the Page of Cups, good news. So there is good news coming. There's good information, but I'm not sure you're trusting it. The Knight of Pentacles in your domestic situation. This is a very stable card. It's about preparing. So there's this energy of preparation. And, and um, nurturing what you have, what you have planted. Hopes and fears, the ace of wands. So aces are always about new beginnings, new creative energy. Okay, and outcome, the ten of swords, something coming to an end. I'm going to pick, see if I can get a major arcana. The two of cups, relationships. The King of Swords, good judgment, somebody being held accountable, and the Three of Pentacles. This is about doing the work, but, but being really good at it, you know, working. But this is the craftsman. This isn't really the worker. This is the person at the top of their game. All right, let's see what's underneath it, and then I'll comment. Um, the Four of Cups, Divine Discontent, the Sun, which is Illumination, and the Emperor, which is Dominion. Um, this really feels like a political reading to me. Um, and so I apologize if you're not into politics. Um, this looks like, uh, you know, everything for the most part is, is, is good. The end, the ultimate end, the 10 of swords may seem like a terrible card to get at the end, but it means that something has ended, like something is totally done. And next to that, we have uh, the Two of Cups, which is love. And then the Knight of Swords, which is kind of a justice card. And then this Three of Pentacles, which is really about um, people who are really good at what they do. Um, so I feel like if you're worried about the whole uh, election thing, is that... Um, and you're worried that people aren't going to see and that justice isn't going to be served and that the balance, because so many people are getting away with so much stuff. That's what this looks like to me. Um, that's really what's on your mind. You want people to see what is real instead of falling for these crazy stories, perhaps. But you've done your work. You, 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 you do your work. And if you're worried about, uh, the victory, perhaps, um, and I'm assuming the the you're watching me, so probably victory for the Democrats. I do believe that's 
that's what you're worried about, but they're going to win. They're, things are going to work out. It's just that we're at the end of this. We, we It's like we have to see all the, 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 the stuff. <laughs> and um, let me, let's pull some oracles because I think there's a little bit more of a message here. So let's check that out. Let's pick up, well, first Oracle card is going to be the Mystic Sisters Oracle. See, I don't like to make this be about politics. This is supposed to be your personal reading. Let's see what the Mystic Sisters say, and maybe that'll attempt to make it a little bit more. This could also be that you're concerned for somebody. Now, this may not be political at all, but it may have the same theme. You're worried about somebody who's not seeing what they need to see. They're not using good judgment. But what I would say was, if that is the case, if you're worried about somebody, say like a child uh, who might be marrying somebody that you don't like, or you don't think they're picking the right people or something like that, uh, it's the you sh the person has to sort of go through that process, but in the end, they're going to be wiser for it. So that may be a message for somebody. I don't know. The dragonfly goddess. It's so interesting. Today I was, uh, I heard a, a a bird. I wasn't sure what bird it was. I have that little thing that tells you what the bird is. Um, Merlin. And, um, but when I went out there, the bird wasn't making the noise anymore, but there was the most enormous dragonfly, this dragonfly goddess. I, I swear that it was this big, like not the whole card, but like this long. It was one of those prehistoric ones that you think have been around since the dinosaurs. And he's like, zoop, 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 zoop. and I tried to get him to land on my finger, because sometimes if I put my finger out, they'll land on it. But this guy was big. And he was he was hunting for bugs. So anyway, he, he wasn't interested in my finger. He was interested in all the little bugs around. All right, let's see here. Oh, okay. I'll hold it up, but let me just find the, the page. Okay. My husband is so sweet. He brought me a, a little dinner already. An appetizer. <laughs> we're having appetizers for dinner. Oh, then we're going to have dinner. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see. Dragonfly goddess, truth, authenticity, and honesty. As perfect beings, we often make the mistake of judging a person. Um, as imperfect beings, excuse me. <laughs> I missed the I am. <laughs> as imperfect beings, we often make the mistake of judging a person, their situation, or ourselves on a faulty premise. As a result, we find ourselves in a labyrinth of misunderstandings and confusion. Dragonfly goddess compels you to awaken to the truth, to no longer deceive yourself. She shines a light on pure reality, and the revelations can be both freeing and sometimes uncomfortable. She calls you to integrate your spirit and mind, your inner self with your outer persona, to externalize your soul. This is a call to action, and the situation requires sensitivity to be effective. Speak your truth with kindness and compassion. Try to absorb new information from the messengers without taking offense, which would only distract you and continue the cycle of self-deceit. Empathy for others and curiosity about widening your perspective is required. Okay. And because... It's such an intense time. I decided we were going to use two Oracle decks this month, and we're going to be using the Tree of Life Oracle as well. So let's see what the Tree of Life has for advice for Libra. It hasn't been easy, Libra. You're, you know, you're, you're, the South Node has been in Libra now for quite a while, and that South Node is where we release. And so re Libras have had to release a lot. 
the chariot, the 18th path. So the chariot on the tree of life is between Vina and Gabura. Uh, it sits right here. It's connected to the sign of Cancer. Um, another of the uh, cardinal signs, like yourself, Libra. And it's the uh, the intelligence of the house of influence. It's where the soul takes on the armor of the per personality so that it can go forth into this world and do the soul's work. All right. I will read this to you. I'll hold this up and I'll read it. Okay, let me just find it. Determination, discipline, and concentration. This path moves between Gabura and Baina and is the, is the astrological sign of cancer. You're being asked to release energies that help bring stability, especially after a difficult time. The charioteer lets you know that things are moving in the right direction. Everything will be okay. The charioteer controls her animals, balancing her energy and feeling in control of her surroundings. A fierce determination to get the job done motivates her and drives her in the direction of her soul. Um, and, and her soul knows absolutely the right way to go. What are you looking for? This is the guidance. What are you looking for? What is it that drives you forward? What prevents you from reaching your destination? There are things you need to organize now, things you need to put right. Perhaps not all the mistakes are yours, but you still feel it's your role to correct them. As you put in the hard work, you're seen by those who can help you in the longer term, a career boost could come your way. Yeah, that's the three of pentacles at the end of this reading. Uh, who has run ahead and not played with the team? Perhaps, you're, perhaps you yourself feel as if you don't need to be tethered to the ideas of another person anymore, but you can, but you can walk away without causing havoc. Would it be wiser to slow down and make plans that include everyone? Remember that the first card out was the Four of Wands, which is a card that speaks to that, which is a card that speaks to that. All right. Um, just a little bit more here. Can you remain in the safety of your own shell while changing the place you find yourself in? Your soul travels in your physical body Wherever you go, there you are. Create a new world for yourself through discipline, direction, and effort. So perhaps being this at the bottom of the deck is it's difficult for you to decide which direction that you want to go in because of all the disruption you see in the world. It's like, what's the use anyway? So there is a little bit of a divine discontent energy, which is also at the underneath this. But really, as with anything, you have to chunk it down. And if it seems overwhelming, you have to chunk it down. And you have to be willing to get help or to ask people for help or to accept help that people offer. It's important um, to just do the work. So one step in front of the other, you, you will find yourself on the other side of this. Uh, all we can really do is what we can do. And then the rest of the time, sort of focus on what you want to bring into the world instead of what you don't want to see. Okay. All right, guys. Hopefully this is helpful. Have a wonderful October. Take care of yourselves. Uh, if you would like to uh, come visit us on Mystic Sisters, we do that every Saturday night, uh, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, unless there's a work thing with Ona. Sometimes we have to do it on Fridays, but we've we've been doing it on Saturday nights. Um, it's either going to be on my channel, this channel, Victoria Scribble, or it's on Ona's channel. Uh, you can watch it, uh, but if you want to interact with us, you do have to subscribe. Those are the only people who are allowed to like go in the 
the thing that's on the side there. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about, right? But the conversation that you can have. So uh, if you want to join us for that, otherwise you can see me in the morning as I walk through the garden. The garden is changing every day and uh, it's the it's different, different colors, different flowers. And now the leaves are going to start to change. So it's going to be quite a beautiful uh, fall, I think. So take care of yourself and I'll see you again next month. Um, namaste.